Is your hair thinning and making you look much older? Well, there are many options that can get you back to having a full head of hair. But which one works? Watch as Gary gets a hair transplant here on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world, now I'm living. And the good just gets better, keeps a giving. Not even close to the end, it's just beginning. Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah. And if it's a good, I won't even worry anymore. To call my care, still can kick them all out the door. Go on a try, come and tell me what you're waiting for. Move or keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah. Welcome to The Younger You. Today on the show we're talking about hair restoration and it's being done on the blokes. Now the hair restoration is a procedure done by transferring hair from one part of the head to another allowing the hair to grow on the part of the patient's head where they are balding. Well of course we've called Dr Thompson. Welcome Dr Thompson. Hi Troy. Hair transplant means plugs to everyone at home. Yeah I think that is kind of the typical mentality that people don't really realize that it's it's progressed huge amount. Uh, I mean, worlds since it since it was first started. They used to take a whole strip of hair and just move it to the bald spot, and it couldn't look couldn't look more unnatural. But how does this now, procedure work? <coughs> what you're talking now? About? Uh, hair transplantation is done by a method called microfollicular units, and so each that's enough to make me go hair. bald just trying to say it. Yes, each <laughs> each little unit of hair, which usually grows in a one, two, or three set of hairs or individual hairs, is transplanted individually, and so it looks just like Hold on. normal hair. So, for layman terms, I just want to describe this to everyone at home. You basically take one piece of hair and its follicle. Yeah, one and unit, one follicular unit, which could have two to five hairs in that little follicle that okay. grow out of it. Can we call it stems? Sure. Or a piece of hair? So it's A piece of hair, right. Yeah, perfect, because I got a bit confused myself then. <coughs> when you describe this technique to a patient, what are they thinking? Well, I think a lot of people have the preconceived notions that mm. you already mentioned that of what it is, and so I, I just have to explain how it works. And there, there are different ways to do it, but the bottom line is we take those individual hairs or those individual follicles and transplant them in a very natural and, and evenly spaced way as, as normal hair is. Okay, where you take the hair from and you pop it up the top, let's just say, and you leave a gap back down the bottom. Because so, that's what uh, I'm sure people are sitting there thinking, well, we take it from the back, put it at the top, but then what's happened what to happens the back? To We've the got back. no hair. Right. So there are a couple of ways to handle this. And first of all, the back of the head tends to not lose the hair. But uh, we either take a strip of hair and we section that into individual hairs or we can actually take individual hairs from the back of the scalp too and that leaves no no straight line scar but if we take a strip we just close that together and it leaves a very fine line that's very difficult to see honestly would this work on someone who has alopecia well alopecia is just a term for hair loss so oh. yes that's what it's for Okay, I didn't know that. I thought alopecia was from where you just have bald spots over the head from traumatic yeah, stress. Yeah, it, it can be from so we many can other that, things, yes. So we can yes. transplant hair back there. Right. I'm your new best friend because <laughs> I've got a spot. Yeah, and I've actually <laughs> done that um, on a patient of mine that had a, a, a large skin cancer defect on the, on the back ah. of his head. We closed it, but he actually lost some of that hair because of the stress of the operation, and so we were able to transplant the hair into that area and now he has, where he had a big bald spot, now he has hair growing. How long does a procedure like this take? It takes anywhere from two to eight hours, depending on how many grafts we're doing. And it, it is a very tedious process and it takes more than one person. It's kind of a whole team that, d that does that. Oh the, really? Yes. Oh, I can't wait to see the procedure. Yeah, it, it is pretty amazing. Painful? Be honest um, with me on this. No pain except for getting the patient numb. You know, there's an injection to make the patient numb, but then after that, there, there really is no pain. You were very honest when you first told me about this and we were going to film this. You said, Troy, the best results are 12 months, 10 to 12 months. That is just the reality of how this operation works. We take those hair follicles and transplant them, and within a month, they're all gone. They all fall out. The hairs, the, the hairs actually fall out from the stress of the operation. Oh. And then over the next six to 12 months, it all grows in. And then that's when you kind of see the final result is about 12 months. After you have that initial 
transplant. Can you go back and have more done? Yes, and so that's what I'm, is yeah. it follow up? Is it like yeah, it, it kind of depends on. The face? It is. It's very similar. We call them sessions. So a person would come in for one session, and we choose you know how large of an area we're going to do, and that's that determines how long the procedure would take. And if the person needs a larger area filled in, we can actually go fill in where we already transplanted, or we can add to other areas that need hair later okay, on. Okay, recovery time. Well, the back area, as you said, if we do this, the strip method where we take a, a large segment of hair, we close that up, and it just heals with some dissolvable sutures with a fine line. And there is a little bit of wound care that has to happen. And for the transplanted area, uh, you can actually wash it right away very gently. And, and I usually tell people, just wear a hat, because that'll protect uh, your head. But you can go right back to work the next day if you wanted to. It's come so far. Yeah, it really Even has. Even 20 years ago, Dr. Thompson, when That's you could tell if someone right. had a plant. It was very obvious. And, and also just the way that the transplants are done, the direction that the hair grows out of the head and how, how they're kind of spaced, all of that has really come a long way. If you're unhappy with your receding hairline, stay tuned to find out more about the hair transplant procedure. The following footage contains surgical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. Welcome back. Let's continue to talk to Dr. Thompson and then we're going to go meet our patient, Gary. Dr. Thompson, why is his hair transplant growth method better than the others that are out on the market? Or well, what do you feel they are? It's not necessarily better than other methods. There are topical medications that we use, there are oral medications that we use, and those all have science behind them and they work. Do they work? work? They do work, um, but they're not, they, they a lot of times are more um, aimed at preventing further hair loss and That's they might true. get That's some true. they might get some modest results in terms of hair regrowth but there's really nothing like this that can can really regenerate an area that's completely lost its hair you're a facial cosmetic surgeon why did you decide to sh do your expertise also in hair transplant my training is basically everything from the neck up. It's a very good question you ask because a lot of different specialties are involved in this procedure and you know you need to have spe special training uh, to do it. It's not limited just to facial plastic surgeons or plastic surgeons. There are dermatologists that do it and many other specialists as well. How do you know if you're the right candidate for this and is it for men and women? It is for men and women and there are occasions where somebody is not just a good candidate. If, if you're really young and you've already lost all your hair um, from the top of your head then you may not be a very good candidate. Everybody's a candidate for the medications. It sort of um, needs to be determined on an individual basis. Dr. Thompson, I don't normally do this but I want to ask you about candidacy. Yeah. Do you think, so I'm receding here, right. it's hereditary, my father has it, right. my mother has it, my grandfather had it. Am I someone who could go down that road and do it. You have a very, um, you know, full head of hair and yes. you're just receding here. Just so around the sides. Absolutely, I think you're an excellent candidate okay. and that's an area that we would fill in. The younger you are and the more hair loss you are, then we have to be a little more conservative okay. about what we do. Um, we don't want to fill in an area and then have you lose everything else and then all of a sudden it doesn't look natural. Ah, interesting. Next question to you. You take it from the back, put it back, let's say you put it on the, my temples and then all of a sudden I start losing from the front of my head but my temples are looking good. Right, and, and you're not going to lose all of the front of your head because mm. it's just the way that you're aging, and that's why it's so important the way that we plan this. Dr. Thompson, I'm cutting our question short okay. because I want to get to surgery and see what you did okay. on Gary's hair. Right. Take a look. My name is Gary. I'm 52 years old. Hi, Gary. Hi, how, how are you today? You? Good. I'm great, thank you. So what's our plan today? What are we, what are we going to do um, from your understanding? From my understanding, you're going to cut a graph in the back mm -hmm. and just start planting like a garden in the top. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to kind of fill in up here in the front where things have kind of gotten a little thin and that'll just help to frame your face a little bit and it'll give you a nice head of hair up here. What happens to the hair that you cut out in the back then? So yeah, that, that will leave a thin strip of open area that, that doesn't have any hair and I can just raise that scalp up a little bit, pull it together and stitch it and it'll heal and you'll You'll have a very fine line and a lot of times this, the hair will grow right through that, that scar and it's minimally visible. Unfortunately, the hair grows downward and so it, it's usually impossible to see unless you're really looking for it. Now, I'm going to have a whole team of people working with me. Um, this, is, this is not a one-person 
operation. It's a multi-person operation. I want to introduce you to Al Tariq, who's here with us. You well, Tariq? Hey, you Why don't I meet you? Very nice to meet you. And Al Tariq has a lot of experience with hair as well, and we'll be working together closely, even from right from the get-go here in just a few minutes. So. Okay, great. Okay. Great. The reason I'm having the hair transplant done today is because Doc says I'm a good candidate for it. Um, not really losing all my hair, so this would be a good time to do it. Um, in my business, I deal with a lot of people. I've always believed that attitude is everything. If you feel really good inside about yourself, you know, it shows on the outside. So we're about to shave some hair here, and we like to get it from an area where he's very unlikely to lose hair in the future, and it's also pretty dense back here. And the scalp is a little bit more loose, so we can close it together without much tension. So this is where we're going to shave some hair, and this is where we'll be taking the, the grafts from. Right now we're measuring the distance of how much hair we want to take because we can estimate how many grafts are per square centimeter. So right now we're going to make a mark just in the length we want here, which is going to be about 15 centimeters. And then we need it a certain width to get the grafts that we need, usually about 12 millimeters. I have a friend that's completely bald and he says, oh, I'd love to do it, but um he goes, yeah, I'd go for it. So this is a densometer, and it has a magnified view of, of the hair follicles, and I can just look under here and see about how many grafts we ha would have in this area. And if you can make yourself better and give yourself, you know, more confidence, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, I'm going to inject some local, Gary, and get it all numb, okay? All right. This is the only part that'll hurt, and it'll burn as it goes in. So Gary, we're going to essentially keep the hairline that you already have, but just add a lot to it. And then it'll look very natural for your age. And when, when you look at yourself straight on, you'll have a lot thicker head of hair. When we come back, it's time for Dr. Thompson to make his first incision. It's giveaway time on The Younger You. Enter for your chance to win a signed copy of our personal trainer, Greg Marshall's book, Body Fit. Head over to theyoungeryou.tv forward slash contest to enter. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and how to join the Younger You conversation. The following footage contains surgical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. Confidence is Gary's key to success. Why don't we watch Dr. Thompson give Gary even more confidence with a hair transplant? You know, honestly, I have no idea what I'm walking into. I mean, I'm kind of a guinea pig, you know, but that's okay. It's okay. But, um... You know, just to, to fill in, like you said, in the front more and, and like I said, if you have more confidence, more feel better about yourself. I mean, I don't think, like I said, there's anything wrong with that. So the key here is that we cut these, to strip parallel with the hair follicles and then we'll preserve as many of those as we possibly can. So we can see that we're parallel to the follicles here because you can see all these little hairs going lined up with where we are here. Hanging in there, Gary? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sweet. Good. <laughs> so this is our hair grafts right here, and we're going to take those over to the microscopes now. I definitely don't feel my age. I know I don't act it, so... <laughs> he really cares about his patients. You know, and I and I asked him. I said, "What would be the difference if I go into Bosley, who's you know famous for it, which I know nothing about them, but that's all they do?" He says the difference is that you can get personal care. You know, every time you go back, you know, you might get a different doctor, which is that means a lot to me. Years ago, I look at it and the changes that people are making and say, "Ah, just grow. Old. This is what you get. Just live with it." But the world we live in, one, um, I think it's great if people have more confidence. Like I said, attitude is everything. I'm a true believer in success is attitude. If you have the right attitude, you're going to be successful. So if you feel better inside about yourself, like I said earlier, it's going to draw people to you. It's not, it's not a vanity thing. It, it's, it's. It's success, I mean, it's success. If you feel good about yourself, it shows. So we just uh, closing this incision up now. You can see it's hiding pretty well there. It should heal up and the hair should go through it and it should look really good.
life's about choices. You have to change things yourself. Okay, now I want you to put your head back and go ahead and turn toward me just a little bit. That's fine right there. Great. Put the local in, but then we also inject some saline to make the skin kind of puff up and tight, and that helps us to get the grafts packed in like we need to. So now what I'm gonna do is um, just make some marks on his head that are centimeter square marks, and that'll help us to determine the density of our grafts and the spacing. So I've just kind of done a little grid here on a scalp that has one centimeter square boxes. It's, you don't have to do it that way, but, but it'll, I like to because it gives us an idea for spacing and density of the grafts. They come in units of one hair, two hairs, three hairs, four hairs in one little bunch. Not only are they dividing them up, they're dividing them up by how many hairs or how many bulbs are in each little bunch. So a follicle might have multiple hairs coming out of it. We want the ones with the singles to be up the front because then it gives you kind of a more smooth transition from the front to the back. Making you know a choice like this is to feel better, maybe be more successful or feel better about yourself. That's There's nothing wrong with that. If it can make you feel better inside, I really believe it just shows on the outside. Will Gary be happy with a whole new head of hair? Coming up, we'll find out. Looking for the perfect beauty product? Each week, The Younger You highlights a standout product in the health and beauty industry. Head over to theyoungeryou.tv and check it out. Love to hear your comments. It's giveaway time on The Younger You. Enter for your chance to win a signed copy of our personal trainer, Greg Marshall's book, Body Fit. Head over to theyoungeryou.tv forward slash contest to enter. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and how to join The Younger You conversation. Well, did the hair transplant work? We need to check back in with Dr. Thompson and Gary, and we're gonna find out about the results. Welcome to the show, Gary. How are you? Good. Thank All you. right. We've watched you on the journey of having this hair transplant. I want to ask you why you wanted it. Well, at first I really didn't know what to expect. I wasn't going to do it, and then I ended up going to do it because the doctor and the staff convinced me I was a good candidate for it. Was, it. <laughs> it so, was the conviction of the was, team was. that had allowed you to give you that confidence to go through with it. What did you think was going to happen when they said, you're the perfect candidate, this is what we're going to do. What was in your mind? I just thought it would look natural. Okay. That, that was the main thing. And I, I told Dr. Thompson and staff, that's, that was my biggest concern. You know, I wasn't worried about the procedure or anything like that. It was just really? to look more natural. Okay, yeah. because I want to say to you, when in the past, and men have had transplants, okay, they look very, you know, the old fashioned word, plugs. Gosh. Everyone <laughs> talks about how bad it looks. You can't tell me that that part didn't go through your mind. It did. Okay. No, it did. Okay. That, that was a big concern. So this new technology that Dr. Thompson does, how do you feel that conversation went with him and you thought, you know what, this is no longer the plugs. This is what I can do. Yeah, well, it was excellent. Everything was explained to me from top to bottom, what would happen. 
So what did your family think about you actually having this done? Mixed emotions about because they were thinking plugs too. <laughs> See? And look, everyone it's at home who's been watching your journey through this right. will be thinking the same thing. I wonder what it's going to look like before and after. So let's remind everyone, now this has taken 12 months okay, to be able Correct. to film because it's not like a facelift, it's not like a breast enhancement. When you're doing a hair transplant, we need to show the results up to 12 months later. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the before shot of you, what it looked like, looking at the top of your head. Now when I see that, I think to myself, yeah, you know what? You needed to have something done. It was yeah? thinning. It okay. was thinning. Gary, this is one month later. You can already see that you've got a little bit of movement happening. Plus, yes. I like that you grew out your colour. Yeah. I like yeah. that. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to go to three months. Let's take another look at three months. Okay. Now, what I wanted to say right here, Gary, is if you notice the picture just before, you were quite red at the beginning of your forehead, weren't you? Yes. Now you can actually see how the hair is coming through. Now, let's look at five months. Wow. Gary, I'm not kidding. I have been a hairdresser for 20 years in Australia. And I have thought to myself many times, I wonder what a hair transplant would really look like with modern day technology. And I think that's what we've got. It's incredible. It is. And now looking at your hair even more, I think I need to go in and have it done myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got the doctor for you. Oh, you got the doctor. Okay, Perfect. Do. Okay. <laughs> when you look at those before and after shots, do you think to yourself, I'm so glad I did this. I am. Really? I am. I guess I didn't realize how much my hair was thinning. Who told you it was thinning? Um, the beer. <laughs> so it, it really didn't bother me. It's, you're getting older, you know, it goes with age, right? But when you kept saying I'm a good candidate for it, not everyone can have this done, that's what kind of pushed me over the edge. And when the doctor told you that it would take up to 12 months to see final results, what were you thinking? Are you serious? Ah, you know, it's a pretty patient guy, so... You're a pretty a, patient guy. Yeah, very. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. No, because I think to myself, if I had to wait for 12 months for something to see the result, I think, would it be worth the effort? And what do you think? No Was doubt. Was it worth oh, the effort? no question. Would you be oh. hesitant to say to a buddy, you know what, I've had a hair transplant? No, I really wouldn't. No? I really wouldn't. Has anyone noticed? They've noticed, but they don't know what's different. <laughs> they don't know they don't. what's... Ah, they come in my store that. and they're like, you look a little different. You lost weight. I said, yeah. See, <laughs> exactly. Because a lot of women have the same feeling with their girlfriends. They go, gee, you look rested or gee, you look well. And they've had a little bit of Botox and a little bit of filler. And it does make them feel a lot more confident as well. I want you to take Dr. Thompson out of the equation here. If it wasn't Dr. Thompson who you got that confidence from to have it done, do you think you would have had it done with someone else? Probably not. To be honest with you. Well, well, what was it? And originally, I went in because I couldn't breathe. Oh. So I had my nose, uh, he had to go in and cut did it Did he take the hair from your nose and pop it on your that's head? That's what he did. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's the secret. Okay. <laughs> no, but he, he cut out the cartilage and stuff, and then I had to go back and got to know mm. everyone. And then the hair thing came up and did a little research and everything on it. And that's how we got to that point. Well, you've had an incredible result. Yeah. Are you happy? Very. Oh, Very. Like more than what you thought was going to happen? Yeah. Well, good job. I really am. It's a big journey to ask someone to do this for 12 months for me, so yeah. thank you. I appreciate it, I appreciate it. If you're sitting at home tired of seeing your hairline fall further and further back a little bit like mine, well, perhaps you should consider a hair transplant. For more information about the show, please visit our website at theyoungeryou.tv where you will get all the information about Dr. Thompson and this incredible service. I'll see you next week. Coming up on The Younger You, we want to show you all about how to reclaim your smile with dental implants. The Younger You set provided by Madison McCord Interiors.